I praise God for this opportunity to stand before you and deliver uh, yung final uh, message natin or lecture. And I want it na maging challenge din sa ating lahat, most especially sa mga singles. So let us uh, ask the Lord's help in prayer. Father, we are thankful for this opportunity. We want to remind ourselves that you are our creator and we are just but creatures. And we can never go and fill in that gap wherein we will be able to go up and understand you. You have to condescend uh, yourself and give us your revelation freely. And that is why we ask you that you be with us this afternoon to speak to us using your word and that, Lord, we would be confronted by this word. And we pray that uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, your uh, attributes, your glory would become not only terrifying, but uh, also sweet and comforting. May we become uh, the uh, youth or young people of our generation who would truly be of service to the Lord and to the gospel. Be with your servant, and uh, we recognize that our, in our inadequacy, we have a Savior for weaklings like us. We thank you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, when we were in Cebu last month, our gracious host took us to the Gorordo Museum. It was a colonial era na bahay na kitang-kita mo yung Spanish at Chinese influences. Tumira doon si Juan Gorordo, the very first Filipino bishop ng Cebu. Doon sa kanilang bahay, may napansin ako na very interesting. Doon sa malapit sa window, they have what they call the suitor's area. At doon sa suitor's area, may mahabang parang couch doon, then may isang upuan, and I ask ano yung doon, uh, yung mahabang upuan doon pala umupo, yung dalaga nililigawan, at yung isa naman na nakaseparate na chair ay nandun yung uh, naliligaw. Sabi ko, sino yung umuupo dun sa gitna? Uh, yun yung bantay. <laughs> Kung sa church natin, yun yung pastor, di ba? <clears throat> but there's one thing na may napansin ako dun sa table. There was this pitcher with water and a glass. At sinabi sa akin, sa amin, habang nandun kami na ang usually nangyayari sa suitor's area, doon dumudungaw yung babae. Pag siya hinaharana, at kapag hindi niya gusto yung lalaki, binubuhusan niya ng tubig. <laughs> Pero kapag gusto naman niya, nagwe-wave siya ng white handkerchief. Ah. So, ang sweet, di ba? <laughs> well, uh, times have changed. Because this is not the way anymore na kapag pumuporma ang mga lalaki sa kanilang uh, iniirog, uh, di na uso yung harana bagamat hindi naman ito masama. And for actually, we find it sweet. Uh, pero lalong hindi na uso yung tapunan mo ng tubig ang lalaki kung babaste rin mo lang. Today, all this stuff can happen through social media where via chats or calls, romantic relationships are born and broken. And there's also no need for a suitor's area sa mga bahay natin, lalo na sa mga churches. And we have accepted this change. But I want to address something that if this issue sa relationship natin among singles or singles, opposite sex have changed, but there's one thing that we can never accept to change among the life of the young is that their relationship with God ay hindi dapat mapunta sa back seat. We cannot just sit here and see the hearts and lives of our young men and women being caught up by this modern world with its godless values and worldly spirit of the age. We will fight to tell our young about this. In fact, in the Bible, there is this exact setting ng isang libro sa Biblia na nag speak about this particular stage sa buhay ng tao na ina-address ang mga kabataan. And I would use primarily yung Ecclesiastes because the Kohelet or preacher is addressing young men or young women dito sa book na ito. And of course, we will use that famous passage in New Testament about spiritual disciplines. And I want to have a 
challenge dito sa ating lahat, lalo na sa mga singles, on how to address this issue na I think it is plaguing the young people sa ating generation. Business. And of course, kapag nandyan ang business, ang ating spiritual disciplines ang matatamaan. So let me read to you the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God sa Ecclesiastes 11. Mula verse 7 hanggang chapter 12 verse 8, then tatalon tayo sa 1 Timothy 4, 7 to 8. Let me read to you the word of God. Light is sweet and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. So if a person lives many years, let him rejoice in them all. But let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Remove vexation from your heart and put away pain from your body. For youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth. Before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain, in the days when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men are bent and the grinders cease because they are few and those who look through the windows are dimmed and the doors on the street are shut when the sound of the grinding is low and one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high, and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along, and desire fails. Because man is going to his eternal home. And the mourners go about the streets before the silver cord is snapped, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God Who gave it? Vanity of vanities, the, says the preacher, all is vanities. And going to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 to 8, the Apostle Paul, yung uh, batang pastor, ay sinasabihan niya how to behave or what to do sa kanyang spiritual life at sa kanyang ministry. Have nothing to do with irreverent silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness, For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. This is the inspired, inerrant, infallible word of God. Let us heed to its message. Well, bawat passages na binasa natin, they address their younger counterparts. The Kohelet or the preacher addresses the young man, Paul is addressing the young man, Timothy. Punta tayo muna sa Ecclesiastes. The common view dito ay there are two contrasting worldviews being presented. <clears throat> That is, there is this life under the sun and there is life under God. Na parang pinagbabangga yung uh, pananaw ng makamundo at pananaw ng makajos. But the problem with this interpretation is that 204 verses present a life from the perspective of an evil person Uh, and only 17 verses are from the good. Kaya ang makikita natin dito is that yung inohold ng maraming mga teachers about this view is that the problem is that this is a canonical book at kung makikita natin, there are more biblical agreements dito sa book rather than disagreements. That is why I take the interpretive framework of uh, Robertson. O. Palmer Robertson says that Ecclesiastes is actually a realistic picture of life because it provides a strong dose of realism. Kaya sabi niya sa verse 8 ng chapter 12, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. It's a Hebrew because it's a concrete language. If it wants to intensify the word, hindi niya bibigyan ng parang more beautiful or uh, uh, more powerful. Ang gagawin niya ay uulitin niya yung word like holy, holy. And then kung ito ay super intensified, gagawin holy, holy, holy. So kapag sinabi ng Hebrew word na vanity of vanity, hebel, hebel, it means this is the ultimate uh, Uh, this is the ultimate na emptiness. Eh, yung 11 times the word transitoriness was used, 
And then yung frustration, 25 times. So, these two of recurring words best extract the meaning of Hebel. Yung Hebel kasi, this is where we got yung word din na uh, Abel, which is parang napakadali, very brief. Uh, nabuhay lang siya ng napaka-iksi because of the brevity or the transitoriness of human life, the result is now frustration. In other words, Ecclesiastes is telling us or reminding the young men and women, life here on earth, whether believer or unbeliever, will be a life of frustration because of sin. That is Kohelet. Yung Kohelet, Ecclesiastes yan, that is the Greek Translation of the word Kohelet. Kaya kung mapapansin yung word na Ecclesia, it means assembly. Someone who addresses the assembly of God and he presumes to speak before for God. And as the king of Israel and as the spokesperson of God, ang Kohelet ay nilalaparan niya yung kanyang hearers. He's actually speaking to the whole mankind. And in this part, sa last part ng Ecclesiastes, the Kohelet or the preacher or the Ecclesiastes is addressing the young and giving them some of the most important reminders and warnings that they will ever hear from anyone. If you want to have an advice for the young that is so insp- that is biblical and inspired, this is the place in the Bible that you go to. And according to uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 11.7, Rejoice, O young man! Sa so chapter 12 verse 1, remember your creator in the days of your youth. The young man here is the person not considered yet aged or old man. So if you consider yourself not yet old, this text is reminding you na ito ang magiging buhay mo. And at the same time, ito yung dapat mong alalahanin. Tamang-tama ito dahil ang Kohelet ay nasa old age na siya nung isinulat niya ito at sa wakas nakita na niya yung ending ng buhay. Nasa chapter 12 na siya na nararamdaman na niya yung sinasabing when the grinders will cease, yung ngipin niya unti-unti nang nalalaglag isa-isa, yung tuhod niya nanginginig na, wala na siyang ganung lakas tulad ng mga kabataan. Therefore, as old age is characterized by decrease in physical strength and waning years, the Kohelet is understandably drawn to the strength of the young and the full years ahead of them. Inaalala niya, ito yung pupuntahan niyo, ito yung advantage niyo. And he appeals to them of their advantage. And in 1 Timothy 4, kung titignan natin doon si Paul, he writes to his protege that he must do everything in order to be a good example as a soldier of Christ before the believers in Ephesus. He entrusted the work there to him, but Timothy must pay careful attention. At ang buhay niya dapat ay maging model for Christian virtues like self-control and other things. He is to be different from the youth of his generation who were more characterized by revelry and debauchery. I heard a commentator who said sa Greek culture nila, Timothy, if you are under 40 years old, you're considered young. So kung wala ka pang 40 dito, enjoy and savor the moment. <laughs> but sabi ni Paul, do not be like this, Timothy. Ikaw ay magkaroon ng ganitong pamumuhay. You don't uh, waste your strength. So the similarity in these two passages that they have the same note on sobering warning and command, on youthfulness, and on the importance of commitment that is kailangan sa kanilang pagpo-progress sa personal walk nila sa Panginoon. At a time na very rampant ang business, na attract itong kohelet sa concept ng strength at ng years because these are commodities possessed by many young men and women but not necessarily by older men. Yet, what happens is that many of the younger people sa ating generation is that they don't seem to be conscious and act like a good steward of this commodity or advantage that they have. So in other words, I'm addressing this to singles. Are you aware kayong mga singles or tayong mga bata dito that you have a special opportunity that others do not have? Even the Kohelet does not have any longer. That you have in your body a powerful capital and advantage. And what is the Kohelet's advice? Use your strength. Do not waste it. You have something na wala ang marami. 
But as it is your advantage, it is also your disadvantage. Your strength is also your weakness. How? By being youth with the strength and years that you have, yet the temptation for you right now is that you think you still a lot of time to spare. You think that these things na binibigay sa atin ng Biblia, they can wait. And let's not pretend on the obvious. The young men and women of this generation can be characterized by one thing. And I want to say this, my opinion, and I hope you will agree, that the millennial and the Gen Z right now are some of the busiest creatures who have ever touched this planet Earth. They're just so filled with activities, so overwhelmed by many work, so many things that demand their attention. They have a lot of expectations to meet and projects to complete. In fact, you have a lot of roles to play. Many of you are breadwinners to your families. Some of you are generous gift givers to your relatives. Many of you are supportive friends to your inner circle. Kailangan nandun ka lagi sa activity nila. Kailangan nandun ka sa kasal. Kailangan nandun ka sa mga proposal. Kailangan nandito ka. You have a lot of things that you are doing right now. And this is not always your fault because this is our culture. As social beings, we have, we have experienced this kind of situation. They have to be there. The singles, they have to give their money, their time, and their all. E include mo pa dito yung unnoticeably commitment ng mga singles to social media and its toxicity. Yung mga bardagulan. You spend time at sometimes with this nonsense comments and of course some are helpful, many are not. Compute all the hours required to fulfill all these responsibilities and commitment and a single person na nagtatrabaho ngayon, you would agree to me that 24 hours is almost gone. Before, people were already proud of having one decent job. Today, it is so common to have more than one. One job, to the, more than one job to the point that if you do not have a part-time job ngayon, there is sometimes an unhealthy and unbiblical feeling that you're not doing it right. Of course, walang mali na may multiple jobs, but the problem is that pressure na meron tayo ngayon sa mga singles, whether by unbelieving community or even sa unhealthy practices ng mga churches. Before people think of having their own houses upon retirement. But what it is now, it is so normal to hear the 30-year-olds to have their own companies, di ba? Residing there in their own properties and driving their own nice cars. May mga kumakalat pa ng tunay na tao, 80,000 to 100,000 ng sweldo. And with the coming of And with the coming of iPhone 15, we wonder how many more kidneys the Filipinos are willing to give up. Kevin DeYoung in his very helpful book Crazy Busy addresses this reality. He said, and I quote, there are two realities of the modernized urbanized, globalized world that most everyone else in human history could not fathom. Our complexity and our opportunity, we, our complexity and our opportunity. We have more opportunity than ever before. The ability to cheaply go anywhere is a recent development. The ability to get information from anywhere is too. Even the ability to easily stay up past sundown is relatively new. The result then, simple but true. Because we can do so much, we do do so much. Our lives have no limits. We eat most of what we want, buy most of what we want, and say yes to too much of what we want. In all of our lifetime, we have seen an exponential expansion in the number of opportunities for children, opportunities for seniors, opportunities for leisure, opportunities for travel, opportunities for education, opportunities at church, and opportunities to make a difference around the world. No wonder we are so busy. Relate much? I hope being Reformed people here, we understand each other. Hindi natin minamasama ang mga developments na ito of all the theological perspectives. I think it is the Reformed theology that can give you the most realistic view of the world. And therefore, we take technology and these developments as blessings. But my concern in bringing this issue is so simple. The young, 
you. You need to fund this lifestyle or fit this kind of culture or meet this expectation. And for you to do that, you have to utilize now all your strength and years for this kind of punishing schedule sometimes. You have to do the extra. You have to get more side hustles. You have to take more overtime. You need to survive. And that is good. But the concern I have here for you is the concern of the Koheleth, the preacher. If your strength and years will be spent in this kind of setting, the question is how about your soul? As a pastor of a church na napakarami rin ng young professionals, I know their struggles. I know their fears. I know their challenges and even their schedules. I know most of them. They are some of the best members in our church sa SABC because they are so filled with passion, energy, and commitment. But then again, as a pastor, I know that they cannot able to hide behind their humanity that they get tired. They feel the tension, the stress of the home or the office and even in the church. So sa pagkakataong ito, as their pastor, I imagine how hard it is for them to maintain a healthy Christian lifestyle throughout the week. Alam ko yung struggle nila if they will choose to wake up 30 minutes earlier to give way for prayers, for spiritual disciplines like meditation of the Word. In oversight, lumalabas ito, yung kanilang magandang puso sa ministry, and of course, nandun yung struggle. And I find na lagi ang struggle ng mga young professional is that ability to use their time for spiritual matters. Because they have to work. They have to go na magkaroon sila ng mahabang tulog and at the same time, kailangan nilang magtrabaho na magtrabaho na magtrabaho. It has always been a struggle of the young. The burden that I can see in them. And I think the thing that also this message or this text is giving to us is the challenge or that kind of balance or attainment where we can be both busy and also holy. We do not want na maging tamad, right? In fact, a Christian na walang ginagawa, it is an, embar- he is an embarrassment sa kanyang pananampalataya. So we want to be busy, but at the same time holy so that we can be happy. Yan ang Westminster Confession, Shorter Catechism, to be happy and to be holy. So sa pamilya, sa company, and the ministry. In short, how can we build the time-honored spiritual disciplines in a busyness or a busy world of this Generation Z? The answer of the Kohelet is this. Your strength and your years ought to be utilized in the wisest and God-pleasing way because of one thing, they will not last forever. The strength that you have, you will no longer have that strength one of these days. Yung years na meron ka, they will be shortened sa mga darating na panahon. They will be gone sooner than later. And here in the passage, we see three things actually nagtetreten sa kanila. There is judgment in chapter 11. There is chap- uh, old age in chapter 12. And there is death. And these three are the culprits that should remind us, you do not waste the strength and the years that you have as young. And that is the teaching that I want to draw from these passages the young are especially blessed with strength and years, which is why they are soberly warned not to squander them, but to train themselves to godliness. You are especially blessed with the strength and years na hindi namin masasabi o lalo na yung mga nasa senior age na. That is why ang sober warning not to squander the strength and years is all the more pressing sa inyo. Saan nyo ilalagay ang inyong strength and these years? According to 1 Timothy 4.7, you train them yourself to godliness. The word busy can simply mean the neutral, you have so many, you have so much on your plate. It can also be a sinful busyness like workaholism. My intention is it differentiate natin what is legitimate and illegitimate na pinagkakaabalahan. You see, being busy is not necessarily sinful in Scripture. In fact, being uh, busy can be an indication that this person has a robust biblical worldview because naturally he will reject laziness or dependence to others. 
A busy person is a man of activity and hopefully productivity. And the aim is not to waste the years and strength sa mga walang kwentang bagay, but also sa yung work, but at the same time, yung Diyos, yung kaluluwa na saan na. Therefore, I am not here only to ask you to squeeze in some spiritual disciplines in your already complicated and busy life. No, I want to even go further. I want you to evaluate uh, yung business mo na nagpa-paralyze sa yung spiritual life at ng yung buhay. Na even na uh, ginagawa mo na justification because work is always a good excuse. Diba? Para i-forgo mo yung mga bagay na kailangan mong gawin for your soul. And there are two things to address here. The problem of busyness in a young Christian's life and the priority of spiritual disciplines to be kept religiously. So dalawa yung gusto kong makita natin. The first one is the intelligent use of time and strength. And number two, the diligent use of the means of grace. Ito yung dalawa na nakikita kong magandang uh, i-concentrate natin sa sarili natin to address this issue of busyness the problem of business, and then the solution or the necessity of spiritual disciplines. Intelligent use of time and strength and diligent use of the means of grace. So, kung titignan natin sa chapter 11, verses 7 to 10, and for 1 Timothy 4, 7, both the Koheleth and the Apostle Paul promote the utilization of one's life in the most intelligent way. The Koheleth proclaims a positive view of earthly life. Ang sabi niya, yes, you young people, you can enjoy life with different activities na hindi mo kailangan makonsensya that you're spending your hard-earned money for your trip sa uh, lugar, sa isang tourist spot. Go sa mga activities na ito. But there is a qualification in chapter 11. Of all these things, sinabi niya, while you enjoy, do not forget that there is a coming reckoning. There is a coming judgment and the young will give an account of his use of his time and strength. In other words, while other people are saying YOLO, eh, mananagot pala tayo dun sa bawat oras na pinaggastahan natin. It may not be sinful to enjoy these things, but there is that aspect na itong ginawa mong ito, haharap ka sa Diyos and you will answer to the Lord. So chapter 11 verse 9, As a young man, you can rejoice in your youth. You can let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walang double speak dito. God is meaning na, yes, you enjoy it. You can walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. Of course, we are not talking here about sinfulness na pagbibigyan mo yung puso mo. But this is the uh, typical kind of enjoyment that we want in life. We want to enjoy life because God is good. And then in verse 9, But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. What a sobering warning to the young. And Paul in Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, 7, Have nothing to do with irreverent silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. In other words, the good soldier of Jesus Christ chooses very carefully yung activities na ginagawa niya. He avoids some things, the irreverent, the silly myths, and he trains himself with the other things like godliness. So in other words, he must be wise in his use of time and strength because he cannot entertain everything or engage himself in everything that comes na lamang sa buhay niya. That is why I want to address the problem of the young. They use their time and strength so unintelligently by being so busy in the things of life Work, relationship, sin, leisure, and they run out of energy and time for their souls. It is good if you are busy, but if that busyness remains to be a preoccupation only sa temporal na mundo na ito, ang sabi ng Kohelet at ni Paul, beware. Beware of possessing this kind of busyness. I quote again Kevin DeYoung, the busyness that's bad is not the busyness of work but the busyness that works hard at the wrong things. It's being busy trying to please people, busy trying to control others, busy trying to do things we haven't been called to do. So the solution to our busyness is not cessation from activity or outright laziness. No, the pill for busyness is to understand and admit who you are. 
At ito yung dapat ni admit natin no, sa mga singles dito. Kahit ikaw ay malakas, kahit ikaw ay bata pa, you are still a finite human being created primarily to commune with your Creator. It involves admitting them, therefore, that you are frail, you are fragile, and your time is only until 24 hours na pwede mong ipasok dyan ang kaya mong gawin. Therefore, you have to trust God ano yung providence na binigay niya sa iyo sa ganitong panahon. That is why the point here is that the intelligent use of time and strength starts with the realization of our creaturely purpose and limitation. Gusto mo ba maging matalino sa paggamit ng years and strength mo? You have to realize yung creaturely purpose mo and creaturely limitation. Creaturely purpose is the way to build healthy. Spiritual disciplines is not by dumping yourself first with this do this and do that. It begins with your admission first, why you were created. And according sa Westminster Shorter Catechism at sa Biblia, you were created to the glory of God. And that is why yung business na meron ka, eh, maging means dapat yan to glorify God. So if you are busy and then you glorify God, you are on the right direction. But you were primarily made for the communion with God. You cannot afford to go on sa buhay mo. Gumaganda pala ang trabaho mo, nakakapagpundar ka. While all the while, yung kaluluwa mo napapabayaan at nagiging malnourished. What we need now is a theology of busyness. Yes, you have to get busy but also get holy. Because being busy but not holy is equals to vanity. Kailangan magtrabaho ka, magpakasipag ka, just like what uh, Pastor Exley mentioned kanina, excellence. But therefore, kailangan din na maging holy ka so that your life will not be a life of vanity. A young person who is busy except in the things that are holy is living a life full of vanity and frustration. Sabi ng Ecclesiastes 12.13, The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun na this is the whole duty of man? In other words, if you just made sure sa buhay mo, kahit wala kang gaanong maraming accomplishment dito sa mundo, katulad ng mga hinahanga nating mga revered people, but if you fear God and keep His commandments, huwag ka mag -alala hindi ka na pag-iwanan. That's what this text means. This is what really kills a many young persons in the church. They love God. They are passionate with the gospel. They are committed to the ministry. They are grateful to be in the church. But when this young person begins to become the typical millennial or the typical Gen Z, a busy creature probably on the things that are not necessarily bad or evil like work, he is so good at his job, he gives almost all his available hours within the day. Then he will yield in his uh, this available days of his week. Slowly but surely, yung kanyang portfolio, while it becomes beautiful, his soul becomes ugly. While you become good at your craft, you forget to be good to your soul and to your ministry. For sure, this should not be an unnecessary false dichotomy. We can be both good sa pagiging busy sa ating mga trabaho while at the same time busy in taking care of the needs of our souls. But you see, this world is not a perfect world. This is an imperfect world where the, thin, the line is so thin between busyness and neglecting your soul. How truer that the busyness in this world is negligence of the soul. Diba yung famous story ni William Wilberforce, the man behind the abolition of slavery, one time may lumapit sa kanya na isang simpleng nanay and she asked the parliament member and he said, Kumusta yung kaluluwa niyo, sir? And then William Wilberforce answered, Oh, madam, I have almost forgotten that I have a soul. You see, 
He's doing so many good things for the world. And probably, ganun ka. You're doing a lot of things para sa pamilya mo, para sa future mo. But the question of the Kohelet is, paano naman ang kaluluwa mo? That is your purpose. The creaturely limitation is this. We will not remain strong. We will never be able to keep the time that we have now. The Kohelet positively encouraged the young to enjoy their youth. But he warns them that the coming judgment should make them wise in their use of their time and strength. Ineko nila dito yung sentiment ni Paul sa 2 Timothy 4.6 For I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. Alam niyo, na-realize ni Paul na nung siya'y malapit na daw sa pag-alis sa mundong ito, di ba napareflect siya? sa relasyon niya sa Diyos at kung ano nagawa niya sa buhay niya. That he has fought the good fight of faith. So in other words, the end of his life reminded him that his life was a drink offering. The Kohelet's old age naman at yung kanyang impending death made him realize that he should have served God more. That he should not serve God more and not less. There is just something powerful in the last stage of man's life. Hindi mo kailangang hintayin na tumanda ka. The Kohelet is addressing it to you now. Your purpose, your value sa mga bagay na to. So in other words, serving God was meant to happen not on the last stage of your life. It is meant to happen all the days of one's life. When he's still strong, when he still has this kind, this full of years. We will not live long. We are just like vapor which appears for a little time and then vanishes away. We may lose many things in this life, but we can regain them. Money can be earned again. Career can be revived again. Friends can come back again, but not time. Time when used, it is gone and it is gone forever. Peter Drucker sa kanyang book na The Effective Executive sheds this light from general revelation. The supply of time is totally inelastic. No matter how high the demand, the supply will not go up. There is no price for it and no marginal utility curb for it. Moreover, time is totally perishable and cannot be stored. Yesterday's time is gone forever and I will never come back. Time is, therefore, always in exceedingly short supply. So even if you are young, you think you have a lot of time, you don't. Sabi niya, hindi mo raw ito ma-store. Uh, you know the song, Time in a Bottle, ni uh, Jim Crochet. Yung pinakanta doon sa scene sa X-Men, si Silver, Quicksilver, yung tuma, tumatakbo siya sa kitchen. If I could just put time in a bottle, and I would sabi niya, gagamitin ko and I will spend them all with you. It was a song dedicated for his child, nakapapanganak. But you see, hindi mangyayari lagi yun. At hindi natin magagawa yun. So the present mentality of the worldly people in this world is that I will enjoy first and life could uh, wait. I am young and I'm full of potential. Gagamitin ko muna to sa mga bagay na ito. This is so unchristian. So this is failure to remember God while you have strength is actually missing an opportunity of a lifetime. Yung opportunity na makapag-serve ka, na lumago ang kaluluwa mo, may, it may never come again. The weakening of the body in the old age should make you wise in the use of your youthful body. One day, we will all be old with wrinkles and full of regrets. Kahit na sinasabi mo pang no-filter yan, mapipilitan ka mag-filter pag tanda mo. You can still do something about it, but it should be today. Si Juan Ponce de Leon, you may know him in history, is the first governor of Puerto Rico. He was a Spanish explorer and he heard that lore of the fountain of youth. Bagamat yung iba sa inyo mukhang nakuha na yung secret ng fountain of youth, he was desirous to have this fountain of youth na pinag-uusapan at chinichismis na ma-anti-aging yun. Hindi katatanda. So he 
embark into an expensive journey going to this land called Bimini. And actually, he reached Bimini. And what he found there, actually what he found is the state of Florida. There was no fountain of youth. Kahit nanong gawin mo, there will be no anti-aging na magiging effective. No wonder, inahanga natin yung mga tao na may tamang perspective. Jonathan Edwards, how can we forget him when he said, Lord, stamp eternity on my eyeballs. Which only means, na habang nabubuhay ako kahit bata ako, eh lagi iniisip ko yung eternity. The might and the advantage of the Puritans is they were so conscious of the afterlife, of eternity. And the problem with this business is gagawin kanyang conscious sa mga temporal na bagay. So the challenge is maximize your spiritual dividends by giving your best hour of the day and best effort for God. We can only do so much ika nga nila. Hindi ka naman pwedeng magkaroon ng 25 hours at alam mo, special ako sa Diyos, binigyan niya ako ng 25 hours this today. But look at this, you're so busy sa work dahil magaling ka dyan. We give our best and we give our all. We do not withhold pagdating sa work. We make sure we are prepared in the best way possible. We wear the right clothes, we use the right tools. Eh di dapat, mas lalo pagdating sa communion natin sa Diyos. Seeing that this is our creaturely purpose. And it will not be forever na makig, magde-devotion ka na may mga demonyo na nag-tempt sa'yo. Na may flesh na nagre-resist sa'yo. It will not be forever yung ganitong struggle. All the more ibibigay natin ang best self natin so that we can take advantage sa lakas natin at sa oras na meron tayo. We do not go to God to learn yung salita niya when we are exhausted na at wala ng energy na magbasa, magpray. We give our choices and best time of the day to the Lord. The former managing director of Desiring God wrote a very helpful book. You can read it, lalo na sa mga nagtatrabaho. It's called What's Best Next by Matt Perman. It's about a book on productivity that uh, from a Christian worldview. Sabi niya, the most important principle for being productive is Bible reading and prayer before the day begins, every day. This is not coming from a simple evangelical author. This is coming from a Reformed perspective, from a person who knows kung ano yung sinasabi niya. That's why ang problema natin ngayon is that gusto man natin ito. In fact, we are blessed with this. Sometimes we are challenged na, oh nga, no, i-take advantage ko kung saan ako fresh, kung saan ako may, may, may lakas, gagawin ko to. But you see, there is a problem of the young today, this generation. Our generation is sleep deprived. Do you agree with that? And in the most cases, we are sleep deprived intentionally because of poor habits. We're most vulnerable you see, gusto na Diyos na matulog tayo as an act of faith then because when we sleep, we are, the, we are at our most vulnerable state. Pwede kang patayin, wala kang magagawa. We are so unconscious of everything around us. Sleep reminds the Christian na ang Diyos ang nagsusustain at gumigising at nagpo-protect sa'yo. And God ordained that about one-third of your whole life will be spent sa pagtulog. Kaya naman itong Netflix, nung nag-source siya, nung pandemic, it thought of trying to beat yung kanyang final and one last competition dahil napataob niya yung mga iba. Tinry niyang i-beat yung competition niya at yung competition niya, com- or yung competitor niya is not the Amazon Prime, it's not the Disney Plus Channel, or the Hulu, or any other company. You know, ano yung competitor niya? Sleep. Hindi nyo ba napansin kung ang mga episode dati per week lang at inaabang-abangan pa natin, araw-araw may installment pa sa mga Ghost Fighter generation dito. <laughs> Ngayon, nauso na na isang bagsak sa weekend ang mga series. And the aim is plain and simple. Netflix doesn't want you to sleep on your weekend rest. 
Gusto niya na i-consume mo to habang nagre-recuperate ang katawan mo sa mga pagod na naranasan mo during the weekdays. Wala namang problema sana. The problem is, this happens usually sa mga Christians on a Saturday, tama? Pag lumabas pa ng bagong series, Friday, abot na ng Sabado sa Pilipinas. And then, Sunday comes. And that is the problem. Sabi ng sleepfoundation.org, nung latest statistics nila na May 18, 2023, more than one-third of adults in U.S. sleep less than seven hours per night. 50 million to 70 people in U.S. have an ongoing sleep disorders. U.S. adults spend an average of 3.5 hours on social media every night. Siguro sa Pilipino, 4 hours every night. Lack of sleep impacts, listen to this, the lack of sleep of the Americans impact their economy, impacts their economy for more than $411 billion annually. Kaya itong issue ng pagtulog, pagrest, para mas maging kapaki-pakinabang tayo, hindi lang sa iglesia, sa pananampalataya natin, kundi pati sa work natin, issue ito ng buong mundo, not only ng Christians. Kaya ang galing nung sabi ni D.A. Carson, sabi niya, we are whole complicated beings. Our physical existence is tied up to our spiritual well-being. Our mental outlook to our relationship with others, including our relationship with God. Sometimes the godliest thing you can do in the universe is get a good night's sleep. Not pray all night, but sleep. Not, not now, not now. <laughs> I'm certainly not denying that there may be a place for praying all night. I'm merely insisting that in the normal course of things, spiritual discipline obligates you to get the sleep your body needs. That's why yun ang gusto kong i-address muna bago tayo pumunta sa sleep spiritual disciplines. Yung business, yung worldview natin. Gaano ba tayo ka good steward sa ating limited creatureliness? So sleep and sleep, you have to sleep and sleep well for the good of your soul so that you can come to God on a Sunday, on a morning, fresh and hungry for Him. And then we have to recalibrate our priorities. Saan mo ginagamit ang much of your strength? In personal goals and developments? Well, si Kristo, pinakita niya yung good example niya sa atin. No? Yung priorities niya is to do His will. Not only to be good example, but also to be our Savior. Like Adam, we have lost our priorities because of sin and disobedience. Ang ganda ng gospel because Christ obeyed the Father at inuna niya, sabi niya, my meat is to do the will of God. Inuna niya kahit napakaraming mga pressing concern. Hindi niya actually ginawa ang lahat ng gusto ng mga taong gawin niya. There were times that he avoided yung mga gawain. Sinabi niya, may naghahanap sa inyo. Pero ang sumunod dun sa Mark ay, let's go and let's talk sa mga disciples. You see, kailan mo binubuksan ng phone mo sa isang araw? Is it when you are fresh? You give your phone your best time of the day? And then will you work again? to receive much of your energy throughout the week at aasa ka na lang sa Lord's Day feeding. Now, the primary feeding is the preaching of the Word. No doubt about that. Yung preaching ng Sunday. But ang spiritual discipline sa siyempre, i-address natin yung, yung how about those days na hindi ka feed ng pastor o ng, ng preaching. It is good, but of course, kailangan natin ng spiritual disciplines. Sabi ni Thomas Watson or that Puritan, nakakita ka na ba ng prisoner asking for pardon para makalaya siya? Wala siya kagana-gana at inaantok? Tapos ikaw, pagdating natin sa communion natin sa Diyos, we give our time sa Lord nang wala na tayong lakas. With God, sa prayer natin, in communion, wala nang thirst, there's only laziness and coldness. Imagine if Christ goes to the Father and intercedes for you na tinatamad siya, walang kagana-gana. This is unthinkable. But this is exactly what Christ is doing for you. Habang tayo ay ginagamit natin yung lakas natin for things that would not have eternal value, Christ is doing His best. He is doing His, yung kanyang mga oras sa kalangitan to intercede for us. So therefore, Mga singles, I appeal to you 
Go back to your sweet and your blessed priorities. Dati natutulog ka ng maaga to be fresh on the Lord's Day. Dati even if you even pray for the worship service bago kayo umalis ng bahay. You pray for the preacher. But now your Saturday is slowly becoming the most unguarded day of the week. If you are more dati excited ka with Sunday, now mas excited ka sa Sunday. And that's a good indication na yung priorities mo has been affected. Now, if your salvation is not only is only for today and not for tomorrow, sabi na Kohelet, pati yung service, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin bukas ka na maglilingkod. There is no assurance for tomorrow. The New Testament says of salvation, now is the day of salvation. Pero ang Kohelet sa Old Testament, he says, now is the day to serve God while you're young and strong. You cannot simply plan your repentance Gagawin ko muna ito, magpapakasubsub ako sa trabaho, sa ganitong aking mga uh, ginagawa, yung pagiging faithful ko, or yung pagsisisi ko sa mga kasalanan na ito. I, I can schedule repentance. No, you cannot schedule repentance. Repentance can only happen surely if it is now. You cannot promise it tomorrow. And why is that? Simply because of the capability of the heart to grow cold and to be hardened. Because of sin, tomorrow may be too late. Just look at Esau. He found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. Yes, God is always there. And forgiveness is always there. But the opportunity is not always there. Sinasabi ni, ni Martin Lloyd-Jones, na pag nagplano ka na bukas na lang, sa susunod ko na lang bibigay, magre-repent ako sa susunod na lang, sa susunod na lang. And then pag dumating daw yung araw na yung susunod na yung sinasabi mo, you have found yourself napakatigas na ng puso mo that you don't even want to repent. And then be intentionally different by choosing and yearning for absence, inability, and ignorance on the latest viral things happening. If it means being present, available, and knowledgeable sa communion mo sa Diyos. Isa sa realistic lang, baga real talk lang, no legit. Uh, real talk lang. If you really want to have a closer relationship sa Diyos, you have to sacrifice yung consciousness mo sa mga nangyayari sa social media. Eh, hindi ko sinasabing all the time gagawin mo yon. But it should be okay. Kung hindi mo alam kung anong latest na nangyayari, kung dumagdag na ba yung mga listahan na ng mga nagpa-persona non grata doon sa drug queen. In other words, okay lang kahit ma-live out. Napakaganda nito. Yung, you, you choose to be absent. You choose to be unable or unavailable. You choose to be ignorant sa mga bagay na nangyayari in this digital age. Not of course yung knowledge for the sake na magkaroon ka ng communion. I'm speaking here not simply as a Bible student. I'm, simple, I'm speaking here as a pastor. Ang dami kong koranasan dito na ang counseling mo sa isang single, 20s or 30s, ito yung problema niya. And I have to uh, persuade him or her, you have to fight for your time with God. Ito ang isang question na lumabas sa isang conferences ko. Bakit nung hindi kami reform, napakadami naming mga ganito, quiet time lahat-lahat, napaka-active, but naging reform kami, parang, parang, alam mo, aminin natin, may, may napabayaan. This is the problem. So, an- anong problema doon? We have to understand, it's not always legalism to be trying to be disciplined sa ating mga buhay. Si Kevin Deyang again, sabi niya, far too many of us, the hustle and bustle of electronic activity is a sad expression of a deep acidia. We feel busy, but not with a hobby or recreation or play. We are busy with busyness. Rather than figure out what to do with our spare minutes and hours, we are content to swim in the shallows and pass our time with passing the time. 
How many of us growing too accustomed to the acidia of our age feel this strange mix of busyness and lifelessness? We are always engaged with our thumbs but rarely engaged with our thoughts. We keep downloading information but rarely down into the depths of our hearts. That's acidia. Purposelessness disguised as constant commotion. The acidia is the problem of this present generation. So some of us might not only the Lord's Day Sabbath, might not only need the Lord's Day Sabbaths, but also some screen Sabbath, some sock med detox, detox. Kaya sabi ni Kevin De Young, cutting back on business is a community project. We must allow that slow replies and short replies are not rude. Kasi pag nagmamadali ka, you are always pressured na gailan, gawin mo to to the point na wala ka ng time for reflection. Pray the psalmist prayers on the brevity of life. Ang maganda na sanctifying na devotional psalms. You read the psalms. Psalm 90 verse 12, so teach us to number our days so that we may get a heart of wisdom. So Psalm 39, 4-5, O Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few hundreds and my life this has nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. Sila. And ganda nung resolution number five ni Jonathan Edwards. Resolved never to lose one moment of time, but to improve it to the most profitable way I possibly can. Speaking of Jonathan Edwards, may tumira sa bahay nila sa last days niya bago siya mamatay. His name was David Brainerd. Si David Brainerd, he was the top of his class noong 1742 doon sa Yale. He was over, ang problema noong 1742 with being 24 years old, just a young man, narinig siya ng mga tao na sinabi niya sa, about his tutors, si, sa isa sa mga tutors, si Chauncey Whittlesey. Sinabi ni David Brainerd patungkol sa kanya, he has no more grace than a chair. Tapos sabi niya doon sa rector, he wondered why he did not drop, drop down dead nung nagkaroon ng mga uh, awakenings doon. Narinig yon ng mga tao nakarating sa taas, sa faculty. And Brainerd was 24 years old at that time. And he was expelled because of those words. Alam niyo, napakahalaga nito kasi noon, hindi ka pwedeng maging minister sa kanila as Presbyterians if you're not a graduate of two schools, Harvard and Yale. Buti kami, graduate kami sa Harvard, Harvard Street, Cubao. <laughs> there was a record na for six years, pinagdamdam niya ito because some people wanted to help him makabalik sa Yale, makabalik dito para maging minister siya. And he thought, tapos na yung kanyang calling, tapos na yung, yung, yung gusto niyang gawin sa buhay niya. Pero may nakita siya na leading ng Diyos. Dinala siya sa mga Indian. At doon naging missionary siya. And there he was able to show yung pag-grow niya bilang isang kabataan. Niya lang ang problema, may sakit siya at mamamatay siya sa tuberculosis. Nung last days niyan, tumira siya doon sa bahay ni Jonathan Edwards because he was engaged doon sa an, isa sa mga anak ni Jonathan Edwards. Namatay siya nung October 29, 1747. He was only 29 years old, 5 months old, and 19 days old. At walong taon lang siyang naging believer. Yet, yung kanyang buhay at yung kanyang biography na sinulat at nilabas, yung journal niya na nilabas ni Jonathan Edwards, ginamit ng Diyos sa maraming mga pastors at missionaries at naging dahilan to the point ng sabi ni John Piper na yung um, missionary movement ay napakalaki ng contribution ni, John, ni David Brainerd. Napakaraming mga sumuko ang buhay dahil nakita yung kanyang godliness he was so godly at the age of 29. He just lived just so short. It was just a short life, but it was an accomplished life. Hearing this, I'm 21 years sa Christianity. 
And how come this man, he was able to do much for the Lord? Siya yung nagsabi na naging secret niya bakit he was able to do so much. Siya yung nagsabi na I hope that we'll never forget yung words niya. He said, Oh, that I may not loiter in my heavenly journey. Hindi siya nagpariwara, nagpapetex-petex sa kanyang heavenly journey. 29 years was already enough for him to serve his Savior so productively. Secondly, sa diligent use of the means of grace, chapter 12, you will go there. In both passages, there are notes of resolutions on doing something good for their relationship with God. The Kohelet made sure yung kanyang reminder to remember the Creator is during the days of their youth. So in other words, alalahanin mo yung Creator mo sa panahon na malakas ka. Because strength is the main issue here. He's saying, take into this conclusion, alalahanin nyo na yung Diyos because there will come a time you will no longer be young. And Paul, on the other hand, commands Timothy na maging serious sa pag-engage sa, mga, sa, bodily, sa, sa godly training because bodily training is of some value but godliness is a value in every way. Yung 1 Timothy 4.7, ginamit niya yung word na train. That is the Greek word gumnos, which means naked. Ang doon natin kinuha yung word na gymnasium, which yun ang ibig sabihin yan, to exercise naked. In other words, to be free from encumbrance. So, napakaganda. Uh, kailangan hindi yung, wala kang nakikitang nagpa-practice for the Olympics at naka-leather jacket na runner, di ba? So, yung spiritual sweat nandun. And when we talk about training spiritually, we are talking, actually, we're entering the territory of means of grace. The Calvinist temptation right now is in rejecting externalism, disciplines were downplayed. A biblical view on the means of grace tells us na ang Diyos inordain niya yung mga channels na ito, ordinarily, outwardly, and church-oriented. There should be a commensurate attitude to be exercised by faith ng isang believer. It should be consistent, regular, intentional, and therefore it should be combined. So a high view of God's sovereignty should produce seriousness in spiritual disciplines because this is how God nourishes His new covenant people. In other words, ang mga means of grace, they are the only biblical and inspired program for church health, church growth, and health. Kapag nakakisip ka, ano yung church growth program nyo? Church growth secret. Ang biblical na church growth program and secret are the means of grace. Wala nang iba. Because in the means of grace, Christ is preached by the Word, primarily in preaching and teaching, and Christ is made visible by the sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Kapag ginagawa yung Lord's Supper, these are some of the most reliable and comforting assurances of the gospel. In the Lord's Supper, nire-remind ko lagi yung mga members namin, when we do this, mas mag na assurance ito ng kaligtasan mo because when we do the Lord's Supper, kapag dumating sa'yo yung bread at yung cup, it means that God considers you one of His own. Iba-iba ang naging direksyon at naging progress ng iba. Yung iba naging reg- nag-regress sa kanilang spiritual faith. But how beautiful the Lord's Supper is, we are all accepted. Tayong lahat ay kinoconsider pa rin anak ng Diyos. Kahit may mga behaviors na unbecoming of being believers. Sabi ni Wilhelm sa Brakel, it is there that sins are set forth in their abominable nature and spiritual life is revealed in its desirability. Scripture convicts, rebukes, threatens, and judges. It contains exhortations and various inducements. Christ is presented as the fountain of sanctification and it contains the promises. All this, the Holy Spirit applies to the heart of believers, exercising and activating them unto sanctification. The Word of God being the instrument in the hand of God, apart from which a means cannot be operative. So in other words, ginagamit ng Diyos ang means of grace para idaan niya yung grace of the means. So in other words, seriously engaging to the means of grace is the only path to biblical holiness and happiness. Kanina sabi ko, we should be busy and be holy so that we can be happy. 
Because this is actually the equivalent. Busy and holy equals happy. We can be busy in our work and family and still be holy. That's the real happiness. Sabi ni can't use the disciplines of a godly man. We will never get anywhere in life without discipline. Be it in the arts, business, athletics, or academics. This is doubly so in spiritual matters. In other areas, we may be able to claim some innate advantage. An athlete may be born with a strong body, a musician with perfect pitch, or an artist with an eye for perspective. But none of us can claim an innate spiritual advantage. In reality, we are all equally disadvantaged. None of us naturally seeks after God. None is inherently righteous. None is, none is in, instinctively does good. Therefore, as children of grace, our spiritual discipline is everything. Everything. I repeat, discipline is everything in the Christian life. Tama rin yung sabi nung uh, Commander Sergeant Major Shelton Williamson ng Army University. Over the course of the 237th year history of the Army, it has been proven time and again that discipline is the difference between winning and losing, between average and exceptional. I just want to point out to you here that this world is a world of means. God has ordained not only the end of our sanctification, which is glorification, but also the means of sanctification. Therefore, we have to be responsible, accountable, and engaged to the means. Pero yung mga means na ito, kailangan gawin natin faithfully. Because of sin, we need good habits even more. Without the discipline of good habits, we will be at the mercy of our moods which always swings and are unreliable. In Reformed Christianity, discipline is a must. In the number one New York Times bestseller uh, title, Atomic Habits, the, the, the Atomic Habits of James Clear, he told the story, the Cinderella story in the British cycling world due to the installation of Dave Brailsford as their new performance director in 2003. The last time since two, 1908, they had only one gold pagdating sa issue ng cycling. Brailsford introduced what is now famously called the aggregation of marginal gains. And according to him, there is a philosophy of relentless commitment of searching even for tiny margin of improvement or progress. Brailsford said, sabi ni James Clear, the whole principle came from the idea that if you broke down everything you could think of that goes into riding a bike and then improve it by 1%, you will get a significant increase. You put them all together. Kaya ang ginawa ng British Cycling uh, uh, Organization from electrically heated shorts for ideal muscle temperature to hiring a surgeon kung paano magugas ng kamay para hindi sila magkaroon ng colds. Yun ang ginawa nila, kung anong brand ng una ng kailangan gamitin sa pagtulog para lamang masarap ang tulog nila. The result was five years later, ginulat nila ang mundo <laughs> for winning the 60% of the gold medals in cycling in Beijing Olympics. In London Olympics of 2012, they have nine Olympic records and eight world records. In 2013, the most prestigious cycling event, Tour de France, they got it. Now this, of course, pwede sabihin, human nature ito at hindi ito applicable 100% sa atin. Yes, I agree because meron tayong flesh na nagre-resist naturally sa spiritual disciplines. Merong devil na ayaw niya, tinetempt niya tayo. But we cannot deny the fact na meron sa atin at gagamitin ng Diyos itong mga means na ito. And godly people, according to Donald Whitney, are disciplined people. It has always been so. Call to mind some heroes of church history. Augustine, Martin Luther, John Calvin, John Bunyan, Susan, Susanna Wesley, George Whitfield, Lady Huntingdon, Jonathan and Sarah Edwards, Charles Spurgeon, George Mueller. They were all disciplined people. In my own pastoral and personal Christian experience, I can say that I've never known a man or woman who came to spiritual maturity except through discipline. So, godliness comes through discipline. So, therefore, let us proceed to our challenge. Let your youthful years carry the memory to the future of being holy 
rather than being one of folly. Imagine if you are in your age now na 60, magiging katulad ka kaya ng Koheleth na you will have no pleasure in your youth. E kailangan gawin mo ito na years of holiness. Huwag itong years na pwede kang magpabaya. That is why sa mga spiritual disciplines natin, we should have these principles and I'll just mention them quickly. <clears throat> sa aming GMA lectures, we learned that engagement to the means must be consistent and must be regular. Number two, there should be intention that the intentional neglect of the available means of grace is equivalent to the neglecting of the grace of the means. Ang ibig ko lang sabihin dito, pag nireject mo yung means of grace na available sa'yo sa providence ng Diyos na binigay niya sa'yo, you are actually rejecting not only the means of grace, but the grace of the means. Sa SABC, broken ngayon yung perimeter lighting namin. Since we don't have the proper wiring at the moment, we don't get the proper lighting. To reject the proper wiring is to reject the proper lighting. Ganon din sa atin. Kung ang binigay ng Diyos sa'yo dito ay ang iglesyang ito na hindi pa siya siguro katulad ng mga dream church mo, but this is the church for you right now. That is the means of grace sa'yo. And then thirdly, the means of grace work best by combination, not by selection. Yung iba sa atin, magagaling sa head knowledge, sa theological knowledge, tapos malalaman mo, wala pala silang local church. Paano ka mahasa? Kombinasyon, hindi selection. Hindi ka pwede mag-select kung saan ka ba magiging banal. Hindi ka magmamature na kung hindi ka makikipagkiskisan dyan sa mga flaws ng iyong mga kapatid. So, here, just quickly, the preaching of the Word. Makikita natin dito yung nature ng preaching. It makes it the most important means of grace. Preaching is public worship. Dito kailangan nandun tayo. This is the central part of worship. It is the height of New Testament worship. Preaching is worship because we hear and understand the majesty of God. Preaching is one of those rare events where God is nearest to us. God's special presence is only in the gathered worship of God's people. You know, si Mary, di ba busy si Martha? Pero si Mary, nung siya ang pinuri, not because God or Jesus is against uh, pag-minister, pag-serve. Ang gustong ipakita lang ni Jesus is that sitting under the Word of God is your first ministry. That is the first ministry to learn from Christ. So do not neglect your attendance in worship unless truly providentially hindered. And even if it is providentially hindered, ang special presence ng Diyos ay nasa gathered people wala sa kwarto mo. Sabi ni Charles Spurgeon, do not go where it is all fine music and grand talk and beautiful architecture, those things will neither fill anybody's stomach nor feed his soul. Go where the gospel is preached, the gospel that really feeds your soul, and go often. And then, of course, sa mga sample na mga spiritual disciplines, I would not emphasize much more sa mga actual because we all know this. Mas ang concern ko is to persuade you, to drive you, to spend time with this kind of disciplines. The reading and the meditation of the Word. Di ba, common excuse is that we don't have much time to read the Bible. Alam nyo ba, the Bible can be read cover to cover in 71 straight hours. This is very doable if you will spend about 15 minutes a day. Five, five minutes equals three years. 15 minutes a day, one year. And according to Statista, noong 2020, Filipinos spent an average of four hours in social media every day. That's 1,460 hours. That's reading the Bible about 20 times a year. Kung ganun ka pala kasipag sa magbasa ng Bible, kung paano ka kasipag sa social media mo, ikaw na. Ikaw na. Talaga. 20 times a year. Magiging walking encyclopedia ka. Sadly, many Christians still have not read the Bible in their whole life because they have distracted minds, and distracted minds are the graves that bear, bury any serious interest in the Word. So we need to read the Bible every day, not only for sanctification, but for survival. Ang sabi ni R.C. Sproul, ang problema natin, hindi yung mahirap basahin ng Bible. We are lazy on spiritual matters like Bible reading and prayer. Basahin ko lang yung kay R.C. Sproul. Here then is the real problem of our negligence. We fail in our duty to study God's Word not so much because it is difficult to understand, not so much because it is dull and boring, but because it is work. 
Our problem is not a lack of intelligence or a lack of passion. Our problem is that we are lazy. The problem of slothfulness has been with us since the curse of the fall. Our labor is now mixed with sweat. Weeds are easier to grow than grass. Newspapers are easier to read than the Bible is to study. The curse of labor is not magically removed simply because our task is the study of Scripture. So the discipline of regular Bible reading will not guarantee a flourishing communion with God, but it can definitely help our spiritual lives. Sa our oversight ko sa mga members namin, I gently persuade them, wag kayong magpa-blind, you not, don't be allowed to be blinded by the attraction of the overtime na regular ahol almost every day. Uh, and not to underestimate yung power ng waking up 30 minutes earlier for the sake of meditation and prayer time. Alam ko sa mga single struggle ito, paggising, maliligo, pupunta na doon, at you would syempre comfort yourself. Wala naman yan sa quiet time, nandyan naman pag nagbabiyahe, nagpipray ka. Sa mga ganong mentality, I have gotten that mentality before. But let me ask you, talaga ba na na-regular nakakapag-pray ka? Habang sa bus, parang mga nag... Diba? Hindi tayo mga gifted beings na makakagawa tayo ng mga spiritual meditation sa isang napakaingay na lugar. While it is not impossible, it is not advisable. Kung 5 a.m. yung pumapasok, either need yung gumising ng 30 minutes earlier kaya na may huwag siya masyado mag-overtime at reserve yung time and energy for meditation and prayer after work. One of my important guidelines sa aking counsel, if it is about time sa member na ito'y consider niyang i-leave ang present job niya, kapag nakita ko for many, many months na wala na siya sa church, kung buwan na nakita ko, naging cold na siya, syempre bilang pastor, hindi ako madali magsabi na mag-resign ka. Pero nakikita na niya mismo kung ano yung dapat niyang gawin. Na kapag yung puso niya, mas malamig pa sa ex niya. <laughs> I say to him, baka consider mo na yung radical change including the prospect of finding a new job or a place where spiritual life would not become the sacrificial lamp. Nagulatin mo ang pastor mo. Mag- <laughs> <laughs> o kaya gulatin nyo ang church nyo. Pati ninyo bukas doon yung nakilala mo ngayon sa singles conference. Sa church nyo siya umaten. <laughs> but that's just joke. Uh, let me skip yung prayer, the Puritans called prayer as closed prayer, a private space ng Kristiyano. God wants us to pray privately so He can have us exclusively. Ang problema dito is sa mga spiritual disciplines na to, are we willing to take, to, to give what it takes? Are we willing to sacrifice some of our time sa ating busy life? Kaya gusto ko mag-end dito kay Samuel Rutherford because seeing here uh, gusto kong emphasize one of the things that I like with Samuel Rutherford yung kanyang as view kay Christ na makikita natin dito very punishing and it will only lead us hindi ako worthy hindi ako worthy but exactly what I said kanina ang ganda ng gospel because God, Christ is not only our example but He is also our Savior sa ating busy life sa ating mga negligence sa ating ignorance na hindi tayo tinatanggihan ng Diyos because of Christ kahit na tayo makalimot at maniglek because Christ when He accomplished yung obedience or yung, yung will ng Panginoon God was so satisfied in Him sa Kanyang ginawa. And therefore, that is not only an example but our salvation. But to have a close relationship with Christ, sabi ni Samuel Rutherford na nakulong ng dalawang taon nung siya ay naging non-conformist, di siya umagri sa compromise ng mga nakikita niya sa paligid niya. Sabi niya doon, paano daw magkakaroon ng concentrated at focus na relationship ang tao sa kanyang Savior. Napaka ganda ng words niya na I quote, If you should see a man shut up in a closed room, idolizing a set of lamps and rejoicing in their light, and you wish to make him truly happy, you would begin by blowing out all his lamps and then throw open the shutters to let in the light of heaven. You have to begin blowing out all his lamps na iniidolo niya 
So that mapupunta siya yung direction ng mata niya sa light, sa dark room na yon, yung light na nanggagaling sa labas, the light of Christ. And Piper said, when I read this, sabi ni Piper, oh how I pray that when God in mercy begins to blow out my lamps, I will not curse the wind. Probably some of our lamps ought to be blown, ought to be removed, so that the light of the supremacy and the power and the communion of Christ would come in. Brothers and sisters, singles, you have a lot of years and you have a lot of strength. Please do not waste them. Because if Christ who was so sinless, subjected himself in discipline, obedience to the Father, how much more should we then subject ourselves to this word of grace? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word na naging malinaw sa amin sa mga kabataan. They have a lot of potential. They have a lot of years. But sadly, in our intention to be good in our vocation, ang aming pagbabalanse o pagmamaximize sa aming spiritual na kalagayan ay nawawala. Have mercy upon us at nawa ang conference na ito hindi lang maging typical conference that may we go home with that resolution resolve that even when we are young we will not waste our strength our years because this strength the best of the years and the best of our strength ang deserving dito ay wala nang iba kundi yung taong namatay sa krus none other than the Lord Jesus Christ Thank you, Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name.